one of the issues that people have with autonomous vehicles is that if, in fact, we have autonomous vehicles that radically reduce the price of driving, uh, the normal economist response is we're going to get more driving because of that. How do you view this? How do, how do you think this will evolve? How do you think autonomous vehicles will end up being a blessing rather than a curse? I think about this as we can get the heaven scenario or the hell scenario. And if we just introduce autonomous vehicles into the status quo, and it's very interesting when I talk to people on the street or when you read the press, if people are imagining these autonomous vehicles are just being swapped out from my personal internal combustion engine car now, whoa, are we up for this hell? Because the economics, if we, if we keep the same economics and, and do this swap out, it is miserable. And so to express that in a clear way, what I learned from doing Zipcar is when people think about going on a trip, when you own your own car, you think, oh, it's just the price of gas. And in fact, we know that it's not the price of gas. You know, what's the insurance on your car? And what's the parking? And what is the depreciation? And all of that stuff. And that's something that Zipcar did that transformed how people think about transportation. Is They felt the marginal cost they of driving. They felt the marginal more. cost of driving. So when I own my own car and I say, I want ice cream, get in that car. It's going to be, you know, 50 cents to go get ice cream. If I have to use a shared car, I want some ice cream. I'm going to be paying 8 to $10 to buy that ice cream. I'm not going to do it. So now... We, we, some of us have understood that cha transition. So imagine if we go to autonomous vehicles where it's not even my body in the car to go to get the ice cream. And so it really is 50 cents. It's not even my time. And so if we imagine that universe, um, it suddenly dawned on me when I was coming um, to Harvard Square to, give a, to meet someone on, on autonomous vehicles. And I thought, OK, imagine if today I left my home and I had autonomous vehicles. And if you just honestly put yourself into a world where you have one today, what would it change? You see really quickly how you'll have that thing moving all the time. Would I pay for parking in Harvard Square? No way, because parking in Harvard Square, even if I got a meter, is $3 cheaper to send it home. S send or it, just drive send it, around, it drive around the block. It, yeah. So the hell involves this dramatically increased congestion because our economics in cities are, I don't, really don't care about it driving around. Mm -hmm. We'll still have massive unemployment as we get rid of all the taxi, shuttle bus, bus drivers. And the last thing, which I think is quite unspied, is the enormous hit to our infrastructure finance, finances, that our revenue stream to pay for our transportation infrastructure is the fuel tax and in cities, parking, garages, all the fees and fines, registrations. If we go to autonomous vehicles, and if we go to even further shared autonomous vehicles, the entire way we finance our transportation infrastructure will collapse because we're by 60 to 80 percent, I think, are the numbers that I'm coming up with. Mm -hmm. So that's hell. We, hell, and how do we get to hell? We just say, yeah, let's just put them in without thinking through the second order effects. So let's go to heaven because that's way better. <laughs> <laughs> You heard it here first. The, yeah. um, so heaven. Heaven better than hell. The, heaven uh, better than yeah. hell. So heaven scenarios, we get a handle on we, if we think about finance, um, transportation financing, it's been broken now, as you know, for Absolutely. a long, long time. And so suddenly we have this opportunity to fix it and to fix it without any existing stakeholders. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so let's make these rules now that address all these things we know profoundly have been wrong with how we've financed transportation in the past. So. Let's change those fuel taxes to accommodate zero emission vehicles that mm -hmm. don't use fuel. Let's address congestion, because we realize congestion is a huge reality that didn't exist in 1902 when we started thinking about how to pay for, I think it's 1921, when we started paying, doing fuel taxes. Um, let's, let's, think, don't, let's, let's think about the size and the shape of the vehicle. It's true that you know a giant big footprint in the street should pay for more than a small mm -hmm. footprint on the mm -hmm. street and fuel type. So we can start taxing for things that we know are issues and should be addressed and should externalities and realities that we can now tax. So we can make a much better tax incentive and disincentives than we do today. So that would be one. So the natural, just to follow this follow this through, right, is, is a yeah. GPS-based congestion slash pollution tax that scales up with the size of the automobile in some appropriate pro appropriate fashion that charges exactly. you on a minute-by-minute -minute basis for this. And exactly. this, we know, is perfectly technologically feasible because Singapore okay. is in the process of doing it. Imagine in the autonomous vehicle future, 
we only need 10% of the cars we have today. And this has been proved now by three different studies that I just was find, finding, Singapore, one done in Lisbon, and one I read about this morning that I'm not remembering, Canberra, Australia. Mm -hmm. So we only need 10% of the cars. So imagine our cities when the rights of, our public rights of way have been stripped clean of all of those, par all that parking, and we've collapsed the number that, of that cars. That 10% is never going to happen unless we tax congestion properly, right? So if all autonomous vehicles do is they lower the cost of driving, there will be a behavioral response, which will mean we're, we're likely to get more cars rather than Precisely. less by, by moving. Heaven so can only happen with extreme proactive movements now, and that's why I'm working on it all the time.